My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today we will introduce Sensor, another type of entity which is um, very useful. Sensor will, sensor will notify your scripts when the hero traverses them, when the hero overlaps them to be uh, more accurate. So you can resize the sensor to have any size and for instance, if you want to be notified when the hero um, enters this area of, of this room, you can put a big sensor like this, give it a name like sensor, and the sensor is completely invisible, it's really something internal, unlike um, switches, but your script will be notify, notified with this unactivated event which is actually similar to switches and let's say that you have a, a more elaborate puzzle or something enemies to kill maybe and until the puzzle or the enemies uh, are solved um, you want the sensor to you you don't want the hero to be authorized to leave the room so we will put the hero back to the entrance here when the sensor is activated. So just hero set position and it will, should be the same position as, as this entity here, this destination. So we can do it that way from outside. Get position. Oops, it's not the correct map, sorry. This one is called sensors slash sensors. Okay. So maybe we want to, to play a sound or something or, or to show a dialogue to let the hero understand that something must be done before leaving the room. But anyway, you get the idea of the, of the sensor here. Um, so there are major differences between sensors and switches. Um, you could say that they are similar because switches also notify your script when the hero activates them, but they are more something interactive that the player can see and activate. Um, but first, sensor, sensors are, are really accurate. So the hero must be entirely inside uh, the sensor. But that's not true for switches. The hero, hero can activate switches um, even if, it, if he is not exactly overlapping, for example, here. I'm not exactly aligned. I'm like one pixel <laughs> to the, more to the left and the switch was activated. But sensor, sensors are more, are more precise. So if you put them big enough, you are guaranteed that they will be activated when the hero uh, walks on them. Or you could also put them in such a way that uh, yeah, the hero has to get through them before continuing like this. Because here there is a 16 by... Yeah, there is a, um, a corridor 16 pixels wide. Um, okay, sorry. Yeah, let's put it back like this. Um, another major difference is that switches can actu actually be avoided um, if the hero, for example, jumps above the switch. Same for teleporters, teletransporters. Um, so the hero cannot jump with the default abilities, but you could very well make uh, an item that makes the hero jump. or he can actually jump when um, he, he is pushed back by an enemy, when he is hurt by an enemy. So in that case, switches and teleporters will not be activated. The hero can just avoid them and, and get, get through them. Um, so we need to be careful with, with that. Sensors are really more low level. They really don't care about the state of the hero. 
uh, they will just tell you when the hero's position uh, overlaps the sensor and they don't care if the hero is uh, being hurt or anything uh, okay so i will remove this these um, here i have a hole by the way holes can also be avoided with by, by jumping or or if something is happening to the hero or use, using the the hook shot like in zelda but sensors cannot be avoided uh, so that's why they should be used more for low level stuff like detecting the presence of the hero before starting a cutscene and things like that <clears throat> um, as another example let's say that we want the hero to be uh, put back at the entrance of the room when he falls into this hole so we can use sensors for that actually um, we can put the sensor here and let's call it save solid ground sensor and sensor one because actually i want a second one there So when one of these sensors is activated, I want to save the coordinates of the hero. So here the destination is at the same coordinates. But I want to um, tell the engine to memorize the coordinates of the hero to be used as a, as a backup position, let's say, uh, after the hero falls into some bad ground like holes, water, lava, and things like that. Uh, so save solid ground sensor on activated. So there is a function that does exactly what I described is it's save solid ground and that's it. No parameters here mean that it will use the current position of the hero. Okay, so I, I started exactly on the sensor so it should already have been oops sorry activated. And if I fall into the hole, I'm being put back at the entrance of the room. What if I walk on the second one? This time, as you might expect, no, it didn't work. Oh, it's because I only declared the function on the on the first sensor. So let's declare it also on the second one. Yep, it works. Um, Let's make let's avoid code duplication and let's declare a small local variable save solid ground sensor unactivated which is a function taking one sensor as a parameter and it will save the solid ground and then we want to assign that function to both our sensors I mean to the unactivated field of both sensors like that and like that so this should work but as we did in the previous tutorial actually it would be cleaner to do it automatically for all entities of this map whose name starts with um, this prefix without the number for, so for sensor in map gain entities we do sensor.unactivated equals and we assign the value of type function that is declared there so this is cleaner because it will automatically adapt to all sorry to all our sensors on this map you see i have a second room here and if i also do the same there What if I fall into this hole? This time I'm put back. I'm being put back here, and this sensor is called. It still have has the same prefix, so it works for all sensors of my map. Um, later we will see that it's even possible to do it for all sensors of the whole quest using meta tables. It's possible to actually assign 
an unactivated event or any event to all entities of type sensor ever in your game. Um, this is slightly more advanced. It's, use, it's using meta tables, which are quite a powerful mechanism in, in Lua. Um, but uh, we do it step by step, and for today, it's, it's already good enough. Okay. Um, so I guess that's it for this episode. Um, again, sensors should be used for really low level hero detection. Um, if you want something interactive um, for the player, it's usually better to use uh, switches to have a sprite, to have a sound, and uh, yeah, to, to give some feedback to the, the user when the switch is pressed. Sensors are more um, internal. They don't have any sprite. They don't make any sound by default. Of course, you can always play a sound here, but um, yeah, you get the point. The hero will be detected no matter its state, and it has to exactly overlap the, the sensor. So these are the main difference be differences between sensors and, and switches. And sensors can be can have any size, so you can make you can always make them big enough to make sure that the presence of the hero will be detected. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much and see you on Solaris Discord. Bye.